Hi there, my name is Karen and I'm the Liaison Librarian for the Faculty of Sciences, Engineering and Technology at the University of Adelaide. Coming into my role in May of last year, I had formal education in librarianship and good experience in the more complex, complex aspects of discovery, such as systematic search strategies. But I readily admit that I don't have a background in science and the learning curve in supporting my STEM researchers has been steep. Today, I'll share some of the key engagement and support strategies that have assisted me to uplift library engagement across my faculty that I hope will be of benefit to other new librarians in a similar role. So what does liaison librarian support look like at the university? Our research support framework sets out how we support staff and student researchers as per the library's strategic objective of supporting research excellence and impact. From the discovery of information, through managing research data, publishing research outputs and making use of research impact metrics. We also engage with the schools across our faculties to ensure effective communication and promotion of library resources, services and updates. I like to joke that I look after the A to Z of the coolest disciplines, from astronomy through to zoology. In fact, the faculty encompasses eight schools across three different campuses. At the start of 2023, major restructures occurred across the faculty, affecting four of the current schools. And this meant that when I came into my role, connections within these schools didn't exist for the most part. And it wasn't even until late in 2023, when the new structures were bedded in, that I could successfully make headway into building relationships in those schools. I've now built relationships in all in almost all of my schools and I'm continuing to make progress in those few, those few that have traditionally been less engaged with library services. So how have I built those connections? Strategies I believe have made an impact include an initial campaign of proactive outreach, introductions, emails, coffee meetings. At that early stage, I found coffee catch-ups really beneficial for learning the lay of the land and gaining insight into the research needs of each cohort. Establishing key networks, find your school and faculty email lists, learn who's who in each school, and not only who is in those key roles, but also the people who have influence and impact. Each of my schools have a head of school, head of research, head of learning and teaching, and several discipline leads. And these were my key contacts. When I first started in my role, I was sending messages to each of these contacts. For each message, this could look like me sending up to 20 individual emails. My real progress occurred when I discovered the school business managers. I realized immediately that these were the people that my school audiences paid attention to. So now instead of sending up to 20 emails for each message, I send one email to all of my school business managers and my messages reach a broad audience and gain more traction. So my advice here is work smarter, not harder. Establishing presence within my schools has been game changing. I'm now invited to attend or present regularly at staff meetings for SCAP for several of my schools. Embedding myself on our two geographically dispersed campuses has also been incredibly successful. I send out an email a week before my day on campus to remind people that I will be there and the support that I can offer. And I'm now regularly inundated with consults and meetings on my days at those campuses. A good elevator pitch lets people know how I can support them and their students. That has been one of the key tools I've pulled out of my toolkit when I'm at those campuses and come across someone new in the cafe. Getting food involved is always a winner. My most successful relationships have been in my animal and veterinary sciences school, where they have a morning tea for staff and higher degree researchers every Monday morning. Some of my schools even arrange an occasional research support morning tea at which I'm invited to speak. A morning tea is a great opportunity to meet people in an informal setting. They don't need to know what you do in great detail. What they'll remember of you instead is the amazing scones you baked. And next time they need to know something about a journal that they're looking at publishing in, they'll pitch your scones and go searching for your email address, ideally. So here are my top tips if you're a new librarian stepping into a learning curve. Become best friends with the phrase, I don't know, but let me look into it and get back to you. Take any and every opportunity for a morning tea. Approach support and engagement opportunities with curiosity. Learning about the research being undertaken across the faculty helps me to better understand and support my researchers. And build networks, both internal and external. This is not new or innovative advice by any means, and it's been challenging for an introvert like me, but networking really is vital. At the very least, having connections means if you don't know the answer, you can reach out to those who hopefully will. And that's it from me. I hope this has been useful to new librarians coming into your roles and thank you for the opportunity to speak to you today.